Well, work today, uh, enjoying my newfound or newly returned computer access. Um, I saw uh, a link posted to a photograph that I think has been making the rounds, not viral or anything like that, but I hadn't seen it before, but I think it's been around. And it was uh, a guy, a student apparently from Finland, although you can't really tell that, just looking at him holding up a sign saying, I wish Americans would be able to have all the safety and security and basically that they had the system like Finland does and uh, that they would be able to benefit from that and I, I feel sorry for them and uh, so I am the 99 percent well leaving out for now all the reference to the the Occupy Wall Street movement which is I think a totally separate issue I think it is important to address this whole Scandinavian socialism this is uh, the one allusion to empiricism that you hear the most, and it's in this case a little interesting because it's coming from somebody over there as opposed to an American citing that as an example. Now that, to uh, just real quick address the American citing, I've been many, every time it's come up in a thread, in person, People like Scandinavia as you know having the right system, especially for healthcare, but just for the role of government in general. Uh, however, when Americans cite that Americans typically, even the liberals who laud it, are really, really ignorant. Uh, if you ask them for specifics about any particular system, or how, how, for instance, the the systems of say Finland and Sweden and Norway, how are they different? How are they the same? They can't answer. They don't really know hardly anything about the topic that they're supposedly going to school you on. Uh, this obviously is not the case with this Finnish person, though. But the argument as they make it, uh, even if we accept some of the premises, uh, is not very convincing at all. Uh, one problem. Correlation causation. Maybe life is nice in Sweden, Finland, Norway. And maybe life is bad in the United States, as he kind of, as, as the poster was saying. But the reasons as to why cannot be simply attributed to one has X, one doesn't have X, one has Y, one doesn't have Y. It is perfectly possible that uh, Finland's wealth, to the extent that it exists, can be attributed to something else and that whatever problems exist in the United States can be attributed to something else besides free market capitalism. Uh, you need a little bit more rigorous argumentation here. I think my favorite counter to this is people say look at the richest countries and they'll list like Sweden and Norway, which is not true. If I really wanted to list the most the richest country on a per capita basis uh, we're going to be talking about Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia uh, Brunei, basically then I could uh, conclude that really the best system for prosperity of people is uh, a Islamic monarchy of some type, some kind of sheikdom or emirate, and that causes the greatest prosperity because if we look, that's what the highest per capita is by far, millionaire, billionaires. I mean, I don't know what the actual per capita is in those countries, but it's extremely high. So high that the natives in those countries literally don't have to work often. Not in Saudi Arabia, that's a little bit too big, but some of the smaller, um, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, that's the case. And the immediate objection is, well, they're not rich because they have Islam and a monarchy. They're rich because of usually oil. And we'd have to analyze it a little more than that, but that's plausible. Well, look at Norway has oil and there are other things. Finland is has a great deal of mineral wealth and whatnot. So... The United States has other problems. Uh, it's bigger, it has more urban. Our government does things that are strictly non-free market, non-capitalist, that harm us enormously, that they don't. For instance, people in Finland are not being taxed on the order of trillions of dollars to fight wars overseas, well, as Americans are. So all that is ignored. The, the whole correlation causation is ignored right from the get-go. Uh, Another problem I see is the very clear uh, 
assumption of basically conservative bias. Uh, everybody in Scandinavia is taught by their schools, by the government, by the media that is state run often, if not completely controlled, uh, that uh, they are the pinnacle of society. And well, let me brought back, and this is not specific even to Scandinavia. All governments tend to foster that view that they are superior in one degree or another, and that the citizenry in that country or subject, however you want to term it, uh, are benefiting by the rulership of whoever it is who's running the country, whether it be a monarchy, a de democracy, whatever. It's really beyond cliche at this point, uh, this basic nationalism. And when people think that they have an insightful view of the world, and that view is a nationalistic one, you have to wonder. Now, we're all guilty of this to a certain extent. However, uh, and you know, I encourage people to come to the United States, and I think the United States has a lot going for it, but I also am more aware of its flaws than most foreigners are. Its actual flaws, not its imagined ones. And that is the other interesting thing here, because there's the presumption that the United States is a free market capitalist society, something that the governments in Europe uh, actively foster and it's something that maybe you could say was true 100 years ago, 150 years ago, but it's certainly far less true. And there are libertarian organizations like the Heritage, or quasi-libertarian like the Heritage Foundation, which rate uh, free marketism, economic freedom. And uh, some of these European countries that are supposedly socialist, or Canada, for instance, which is supposedly more socialist, rank higher than the United States in terms of economic freedom. Uh, that doesn't come into their calculation. The governments in these other countries, Finland's not fighting a war against anybody, and they certainly don't pretend like the United States is evil, although that would actually be a fairly accurate characterization, but just kind of, there's the doggy dog, cowboy, wild west, uh, survival of the fittest, and aren't you lucky that we're here to take care of you? Um, and the fact that somebody would then just buy into that uncritically is not particularly persuasive. I can find the same people. I mean, I've had I've had people in Sweden tell me Sweden has the best system. Well, I've had people in Norway tell me Norway has the best system, and in Finland, and in France, and in England, and in Germany, and in Iceland, and in Canada. Well, they can't all be right. Um, one of them doesn't have the best system, and even the best system is not necessarily the ideal system, and here's another problem with all of this. Let's just assume for now that uh, things are really good in, say, Finland in this case. Uh, that doesn't mean that they are as good as they might be or could be. Here we wade into the classic Bastiat's Unseen. Uh, even if you had a universal healthcare system that was functioning to some level, that doesn't mean, and, and that you were satisfied with, that doesn't mean you can't do better. This comment has no indication whatsoever uh, to indicate that the the good, I'm sure well-meaning Finn has any conception that there might be something better than what they have. Now, I, as an American, I certainly feel that way. This country has a lot of major, major problems, not just with the government. And I can think of many ways it could be better. And I advocate not a current status quo system, but a radical, a radically different one. One that has certain antecedents in the past in certain areas that, it, that it's unprecedented. When someone makes a comment that they've already basically discovered it, it may be not utopia, but the ideal system, one has to wonder, especially when the example that they're using is one that has many obvious uh, peculiarities, as is the case with all the Scandinavian countries. Very small populations, they're usually relatively homogenous, they usually have a very high per capita concentration of material resources. Finland, I don't think, has really any oil, but they have a lot of nickel and uh, a lot of hydroelectric power, a lot of other things. Obviously, Norway has tons of oil. So it's interesting that they would just assume that whatever system they have would just translate very easily to a radically different society, uh, the United States has, what, 300 million people, it's very heterogeneous, uh, very diverse in terms of urban, rural, all kinds of things, and a very diversified industry, and I might add, 
far more dynamic one uh, than Finland does. The other thing is I found interesting. Uh, I, I saw this posted, I think, in I bet in the Facebook group. Uh, I bet Mises can get more fans than Maynard Keynes. I think. And it was interesting because the uh, the debate underneath there wasn't really a debate. There's a chorus basically, but these people who were singing, as as there are on all such threads, you know, based on such a biased group. But what was interesting is the people who were singing were Scandinavians, the those in, from Scandinavia who were coming out and pointing out problems with their system, not to laud the American ones. The libertarian Scandinavians are more than knowledgeable enough to realize that. The capitalist boogeyman that the media talks about is a myth. If it ever existed, it certainly does not now. And I, I mean, I've had lengthy uh, debates before I started making videos with a particular Swedish person who thought that there was literally no welfare in the United States, that the government did not give out any money to the poor, to the infirm, or to the needy. When I told him that at that time, this was before Obamacare, I think, it was 45% of all medical spending was from the, the government. He thought I was lying, that it was propaganda, and that the, their Social Security, that they pay people over a certain age, that they have Medicare and Medicaid health care for poor. That, and, I, and I even hinted that municipalities and states have their own rules. In my municipality where I went to college, they would give free housing, basically, to poor people. He did not believe it. He thought I was making it up. And this goes to show that these people are about as ignorant about the United States as they uh, incredulously say Americans are of them. And they're correct, Americans are pretty ignorant about the rest of the world, but why shouldn't they be? They don't have to deal with them all the time. Uh, it's interesting though that so many Europeans would be snide enough to think they really understand everything when really only a tiny, tiny minority does. Just like there is a tiny, tiny minority of Americans who have a very high understanding of the world around them, but most don't. And most Europeans don't know anything about America, its government, its politics, its economics, but they think they do uh, because they are as entrapped by their media and their society, which I suppose the governments there foster the, the there's unity of society and, and state, something the United States does also, but I don't think they can sell it quite as easily. Um, Maybe that's nationalism creeping through. That's just my take. So anyway, the comments were interesting. They brought up a lot of facts. Basically, uh, I without doing any checking and realizing that some of the sources were ones that, you know, maybe aren't the most objective, but that by many rubrics, not that the rubrics can't be questioned, uh, things aren't so great in Finland or the rest of Europe. That Their systems are in dire trouble, uh, that they are being... Uh, that they are destroying themselves, that they're unsustainable. And the bottom line, not the bottom line, but another point is this guy is a student. This is the person who is at the receiving end of the largesse before he's expected to pay for it. So he thinks it's free, he doesn't pay any taxes, he doesn't have a job yet. When he tries and get one, we'll see how successful he is, uh, how much he likes it then. Uh, I know in the United States there, there definitely becomes you know, it's cliche, but people get jobs, they start paying taxes, and their fervor for subsidizing things goes down, especially for students. There's a very strong tendency for students, especially university students, but even high school students, to really think that they're entitled to every dollar they can possibly get, that there's no end to the subsidy that they should receive, really. And, I mean, I remember I was this way. I was aghast at the concept that people would be against a tax increase for schools. My town tried for years to get a new high school, years and years, and it got voted down every year for decades. And I, could, I couldn't understand why. I thought that was cruel and unusual and wrong-headed and backwards thinking. And actually, when I was in fifth grade, they finally passed what they called a bond issue to build a new high school. And I remember in sixth grade, when they were getting ready to actually build it, they did a we had a competition where everybody everybody in the whole school district, is my understanding, uh, had to write an essay as to why it was a good thing. And they picked somebody from every class to hold a gold shovel at the groundbreaking ceremony. And what do you know? I won. I wrote an essay that I was pretty sincere about, about how we needed a school and how it was the best, you know, how it was progressive, basically. I didn't use that term. And 
yeah, so I, I, I held a gold shovel uh, when I at the end of my eighth grade year. I was probably 12 or 13. And no, I was older than that. I got held back a year when I was in elementary school, so I was a year older than everybody else. Uh, but I had I, 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 I dug the ditch, and you know, the the our little town, which was a tiny town, but a relatively small town, spent they spent twenty six million dollars on a new high school, and uh, that was in nineteen ninety eight that they started building it and that they passed the $26 million bond issue. And the quality of education never went up. I went through that new building the whole time I was there. It's still there. And now they want another bond issue for half again as much. Uh, and the quality of education just is going down. I mean, it, it's this huge expenditure. As a student, I thought it, I had no question that it was the right thing to do. But even when I was getting close to the end of high school, maybe that's when my, I didn't call it that, but my minarchism was getting a lot stronger. I was like this, whoa, well, I mean, it's a nice, cool building. It's nice to walk around. It's kind of like a private playground for a young adult. I remember kind of feeling like this is kind of a neat architecture, but man, awfully expensive. And now I don't live in the town, but I have friends who do, and they don't want to see their property taxes go up another $500 a year, every year for eternity. And these are people who just graduated, but they, their their priorities change and their perspective increases. Now they remember when they were students and when everything was contained in, in their little government playground that they unfortunately became socialized to, and associate community and cooperation with state, not accidentally, by the way, quite explicitly. For those who are interested, look up John Taylor Gatto for a lot of interesting reading on that topic but uh, that's what this Finn is he's in college and he thinks that he's receiving the largesse he's not paying for it and he thinks just everything's swell and it gives him a warm fuzzy feeling and the fact that this is what he's being taught that this is what he's being fed never occurs to him that maybe that's why he believes it and so it's not a great argument. It's one we all have to live with and hear all the time. Uh, if I have any Scandinavian subscribers, and I know for a fact that I do, I know I have several from Denmark, and I'm, got, I'm relatively popular in Iceland, at least I like to think so. Um, let me know. Uh, it's something I personally, I, I won't, here I, I bash the ignorance of others. I'll admit I don't know a ton about their current systems. I do know some of their history and little things like that, more, much more than your average American, but not enough to be that qualified, other than the arguments that they make are pretty weak, even if we were to grant most of their meat. So anyway, I'm going to have some pizza now. Bye-bye.